Welcome back. Uh, spring practice uh, opening at a number of places and still a few more to capture in. And one of those places, and we've never uh, celebrated the opening of a uh, spring practice in Norman, Oklahoma, for a lot of good reasons. But that has changed today. It's not July 1st, but Oklahoma is now on our distinct radar screen. And who better to talk to than the legendary sports columnist and, and uh, podcaster now in uh, Norman, my friend uh, Barry Trammell from Sellout. Uh, Barry, we talked to you a few weeks ago on a rather sad subject, uh, the loss of your friend and partner, uh, Toby Keith. Today, hopefully we can uh, get back to the field. Good afternoon. And uh, what do we know about the Sooners as spring ball begins? Well, everything's brand new, Paul, including what you have to worry about. I mean, this is a, uh, this is a program that's written offense for most of the last 10 years with Heisman trophies and number one draft picks at quarterback and uh, record-setting offenses. And this year... It looks like the defense is actually going to not be bad, and the offense has a has a bunch of holes. So everything's new as they go into the SEC. A rough, rough schedule, and Brent Venables has a major rebuilding job to do on the offensive side of the ball. Last year, certainly a bounce back uh, after a dismal first season, as we have discussed. Uh, Vegas doesn't seem to be overly impressed with what they're uh, seeing. Uh, the over and under is very low. Uh, how, how is that being greeted by uh, the Sooner fans used to being in playoffs and, and contending for national championships? Well, yeah, it's a uh, very skeptical, uh, you know, it's conspiracy theories against Vegas. And then you start going down the schedule, the SEC schedule, and, you know, the wins don't come uh, uh, cascading down. I mean, the non-conference is... Very easy. Should be four victories there, but you look at what the what the Sooners have. They go to they go to Auburn. They go to Ole Miss. They go to uh, they go to LSU. They go to Missouri, and then Alabama and Tennessee come to Norman. So you know if you if you want to get to nine wins, let's say five and three in the SEC, you know you can find five wins there, but they don't come easily and they don't come automatic. And it's going to be it's going to be a tight fit for the Sooners to have anywhere close to the kind of season they're accustomed to having, and they think they want to have. And, and listen, uh, everybody has dealing with schedules. We we had a caller a minute ago talking about how easy the Longhorn schedule is comparatively. Uh, after a second look, at it, it really didn't look all that difficult. Your your schedule does look very challenging out there. You mentioned what. Uh, Venables is, is trying to, to solve up on, the, on both the offensive and defensive side. But tell, it, tell us a little more about uh, what this offense is going to look like. We, we're so used to legendary quarterbacks at OU. Well, two things have happened. One is the offensive line was wiped out by uh, graduation or, or early entry into the NFL uh, and the transfer portal. And this has been a source of strength for the Sooners for a long time. Uh, have to totally remake the uh, offensive line. Doesn't seem like a good idea your first year in the SEC. From what we're told, they have a defensive lineman or two in the SEC. So bad timing on that front for the Sooners. And on top of that, breaking in a new quarterback, and it's not a ready-made quarterback like Jalen Hurts or Dylan Gabriel or whoever, Kyler Murray, whoever might be transferring in, Jackson Arnold, Ballyd Hood, recruit a year ago, one of the nation's top prospects, uh, backed up uh, last season under Gabriel, played in the Alamo Bowl, played pretty well, but then uh, threw uh, a variety of late picks that uh, that submarined that, that bowl game. And now, uh, I was just looking at some charts today, uh, Jackson Arnold would probably rank somewhere in the middle of the SEC in terms of if you're ranking quarterbacks. Let me promise you, it's been a long time since the Oklahoma had a quarterback in the middle of the conference in which it was playing. So this is foreign territory. They've they got an unproven quarterback, great, great prospect, great hype, but he's unproven and he's playing behind a new line. Uh, the ball carriers, the pass catchers, the running backs, those guys are going to have to play really well, I think, for the Sooner offense to be anything like Oklahoma is accustomed to. Barry, we talked, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and you, you were explaining to me a little bit about what we do here every day, talk to fans, that some of the fans that you had met with and talked to on a regular basis were apprehensive a little bit, excited, but, but, but concerned about the entry into the SEC. Then a good season followed, and maybe that was 
taken care of a little bit. But where, where are OU fans now? I mean, you know, I realize basketball is going on, baseball, softball, all the things that, that OU is so good at. But the football is here now for the SEC. Uh, this is where it's at. Uh, wh where are your fans? Well, I mean, I th there's a lot of excitement when you look at the names on the schedule. When you look at the trips that are coming in in October and November, uh, places they've never been, Baton Rouge, Oxford, Auburn, places they've heard about all their lives, and the excitement level for those games is really high. But it's a little bit like uh, going into, into the unknown, and there's no coming back now. This is not pristine Oklahoma. This is not the Oklahoma roster of 2017 or 2019, the, the roster that Bob Stoops set up so well, the roster that Lincoln Riley maintained for a couple of years. This is a roster that was falling off in Lincoln's later years and has not really been has not been patched up to the degree it needs to be under Brent Venables. So this is, uh, you know, it reminds me of uh, my wedding day. My wife tells the story uh, that the last thing her, her dad said to her before they walked into the church and walked down the aisle, she said, hey, if you're not sure, we can turn around and go the other way. Um, the Sooners don't have that option. They can't turn around and go back to the Big 12. They're in the SEC. They got to make it work. But uh, as the closer it gets, the more reality sinking in that, hey, this is this is going to be a, it's going to be a bullfight every night uh, in the in the SEC and uh, the expectation level, the, uh, the the desire of this program is probably going to have to take uh, a change. Uh, going to be a couple of years before they can recalibrate and see exactly where they fit in the SEC. Yeah, Barry, my sources tell me your, your, your wife modestly pleased with the marriage. I mean, it's gone on a few years now, hasn't it? Oh, for 43 and a half years. We'll see if, <laughs> we'll see if it, uh, we'll see if it lasts. That's uh, that's pretty amazing. 43 years that we'll, we'll save that for uh, when we come out to Norman uh, and we have a little, uh, have a few maybe drinks in us and we're a little looser than that. So let me, let me get to uh, what your thoughts are about this team. I realize uh, the schedule speaks for itself. Can this team get to double digits, uh, knowing that schedule? Assuming though that the four, the four, the non-conference is pretty well, pretty well taken care of. Yeah, you know, if they if they win all their home games, which would would include beating Alabama, so I mean that's a big if. Well, then you still gotta you gotta beat Texas. You gotta find well, you'd have uh, have to find two wins, three wins on the road or in Dallas against Texas. So you know the the schedule did. Oklahoma, no favorites. You know, I, don't, I haven't studied the SEC schedules. I don't know who's got a tough one. I don't know who doesn't. I know that OU and Texas uh, have split all the opponents. The, the teams that OU's playing, Texas is not, vice versa. OU got the short end of this straw. They only have three home games in the league. Texas has four. Texas got Vanderbilt. Oklahoma did not. Um, so those kinds of things tilted Texas way. In theory, they'll, they'll tilt back the Sooners way next year. But this first year... They're going to have to win some places that won't be easy. Ole Miss, everybody thinks the Rebels are going to be good. They got to go to Oxford. Everybody knows LSU will, you know, will be a, a, a rattlesnake. And they got to go to Baton Rouge. Missouri looks better. We'll see. They certainly were last season. Can they keep it up? Sooners go to Columbia. I remember the Oklahoma going to Columbia, you know, for the better part of uh, 80 years. But uh, these players don't. To them, Missouri's a good football team that, that Oklahoma doesn't necessarily dominate. So this is a it, – it's going to be a stiff, stiff test to get to 10 wins. If they get to 10 wins, I would think Venables – I don't know if that gets him to Atlanta or not. Might need 11 to get to Atlanta. But if, if he gets to 10 wins, he'll definitely be in the running for SEC Coach of the Year. The Vegas – I've seen the Vegas numbers at 7.5 and 8.5. And eight, eight and if they go over 8.5 – wins um they get to nine wins i think i think that's a heck of a season finally uh barry i mean i i i feel like i know some of these things uh from just following college football we know texas uh we know missouri has been there a long time what what other uh, and i know tennessee because of hypo but what, what are the rivalries that ou fans are excited about other than the the obvious I mean, well one is and they don't even play this year one is arkansas you know uh you can get to Norman or Oklahoma City. Norman's 20 miles south of Oklahoma City. You can get from here to Fayetteville, Arkansas, in about three and a half hours. And if you're lead-footed, you can get there quicker because it's <laughs> turnpike almost all the way. 
and we got some high speed limits on the Oklahoma turnpikes. And yet they haven't played in the regular season. I think it was 1920 was wow. the last time. Over 100 years, and it's it's uh, next to uh, next to Oklahoma State and TCU. It's the closest uh, major college power conference school to Norman, and yet they never play. And so that's that's sort of an exciting one. Um, you know, Texas A&M is an old rival from Big 12 days. Uh, everybody loves the fight in Texas Aggie band. So that's uh, that's a renewal. And then places, uh, you know, outside of that, it's, it's a bunch of new stuff. You know, Sooners have never played in Athens, Georgia. They've never played in, in uh, Gainesville, Florida. They've never played in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It never has made sense to me, but historically – OU's non-conference schedule always looked more to the Pac-12 and the Southwest Conference and even the Big Ten more than the SEC. So there's not a ton of history there. Sooner start making that history this season. We can't wait to get to know more about it. We'll see you out in Norman, hopefully uh, before this season. Uh, Barry, always great to have you on. Barry Trammell, a legendary figure in uh, Norman uh, and Oklahoma City. 